Hi, this is Reina. This is the past seven Earth's atmosphere, chapter four point three, and this is the final episode of this book. So after you see this, you're done with the book. Then there's a new book, but um, this one is about climate changes changing suddenly or slowly. The slow changes are pretty self-explanatory. They can change by, for example, the Content shifting that causes a change in the temperature of the ground, or there are periodic changes between ice ages and warming periods. There are even some periods where there is no ice at all. It is mostly it's all the ice that you see now would be water. But however, what is kind of difficult to understand a little bit, I would I think, is how they can change suddenly. So. One of the ways they told you is volcanic ash. What is this volcanic ash? Well, here's the volcano that they talked about in the Philippines. When this volcano erupts, most people, when they think about something erupting, they think about the lava. Lava causes, lava causes people to burn, you know, it's fire. But that is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is actually the ash that is sent into the atmosphere. Because if it's a big enough volcano, it can cover the entire planet. It might be too thin for you to see, but it's there. And you'll notice it when the Earth's temperatures start dropping little by little. Now, in our lifetimes, and even in my lifetime, there hasn't been anything that has changed the atmosphere too much. But it is possible, and it has happened in human history. For example... When this, when a volcano in New Zealand erupted, erupted about 2,000 years ago, it dropped global temperatures quite substantially. In fact, both the Chinese and the Romans um, have records of their temperatures being much, much lower after a cloud of dust covered the sky one afternoon or one summer, I don't recall. Another one that happened within human history is. Yosemite National Park's supervolcano. When that erupted 600,000 years ago, humans were already around. But this volcano is so massive, it blocked out the sun for, I think it was something like two years. Of course, it doesn't mean like there's absolutely no sun, but think of it kind of like a thin cloud. You can still see some sun, but it blocks out enough light so that a lot of plants start dying. And without plants, animals cannot survive. It is projected that the eruption of this volcano caused something like 90% of all humans to become extinct. Because there is nothing for us to eat. So what happens is that these volcanoes cover the earth with ash. And they can actually trigger ice ages where large parts of the planet, and it says something like up to one third of the entire planet could be covered with ice. Now the final thing has to do a lot with chapter 4.2. It's about global warming and whether it is man-made or whether this is natural. It's a, it's a natural event. That is an argument we see a lot on TV if you ever follow this debate. Some people claim global warming is natural. There's like there's not something we should worry about because this is a normal process. And it's happened over millions and millions of years. But one thing we do know is that the amount of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases in the atmosphere can be manipulated by humans. We can have a say so whether this is more or less whether we have more warming or less warming. And while in the past there's nothing we could do about it because for a lot of history humans were not even around, it is it would this would be the first time in human history where we have a lot of people, a lot of people we care about that could potentially die if their if their lands go underwater. Like for example, the island of Manhattan well, you guys probably know it as part of New York City. Would be underwater. And I've talked about this before. The Maldives Islands would be underwater. A lot of coastal China would be underwater. 
millions and millions of people depend on our sea level not rising. So if it continues to rise, if it continues to get higher, we can lose millions and millions of people. And on top of that, we can lose millions and millions of species. Different animals cannot adapt as quickly as we can. So some of these animals that we depend on for medicine or just to help us out in general could be gone one day. So even if it's not man-made or not entirely man-made, we do have the power to do something about it. So in conclusion, Global warming is a real problem and it is something that we should worry about because it is something that is within our control. And for the first time probably in history we have the power to change our planet in a worldwide scale. That's all for me. Goodbye.